Field notes, I'm back. It's been a minute. Uh, I apologize for not doing very much. I was uh, on holiday, and then I came back, and then I was underneath a bunch of deadlines, and I had to write because um, I really want to uh, do this show, and I want it to be something kind of dope. And I had an outline, and then I read it, and then I read it out loud, and I didn't like it, and then I scratched it, and then I wrote more stuff, and then I read it out loud, and then I liked it, and then I didn't like it, and then I did some revisions, and I did some writing, and I did some revisions. And if you know anything about me, I love the process. However, sometimes the process is challenging. <laughs> um, and especially when it comes to like trying to be as truthful and as honest as, as you possibly want to be. I have a tendency to write things things that I want to say. And I think saying those things sounds really good, right? And I think this happens to every actor who starts writing and directing and all of that stuff because they go, oh, what would, what, what do I want to say on screen? I always wanted to play Hamlet. And I was like, oh, I need to write myself a Shakespeare-esque sort of monologue because that's what I want to say. Sometimes that doesn't work. And it's not the fact that I can't say Shakespeare stuff because I can, but it doesn't work for what I want to do. And what I what I'm what I'm really working so very very hard on is I want everyone who sees this show to feel me, not literally, cuz that would be harassment. But Feel me. And everybody has this idea of what it's like getting Star Wars. And it's like that. I want to be able to have you, when you come see the show, notice I said when, because you're going to come see it. I want you to feel that way. I want you to feel like I felt when I got the show. Because it's exciting and it's Fun, but I also want you to feel how it feels creating something that's never been done before, um, which is hard because a lot of things have been done before. I'm not trying to make something new. I'm trying to make you feel that newness. That's why it's hard. It's even hard to articulate because this is the first time I'm doing something like this for this stage. It's easy to do. It's easier to do, I'll say in a camera because I can, I, on, in a camera, I can, I have close-ups <laughs> and I have an army of cats, not of literal felines, but people. I have an army of people who can, I can be like, hey man, what do you think? Should I light half his face and that'll make him look like a villain? And they'll go, yeah, we'll do that. It's just going to be me, just going to be me um, on a stage, no close-ups. That's a little frightening. So um, with that, uh, I, I am paying very, very strict and close attention to the writing because the writing, the telling of the story is what's going to be important. I've also been doing a lot of research and I've been going to see a lot of shows. I saw Mike Birbiglia's show uh, on Broadway. It really blew me away. And the thing that he's really great at, and it's not just, you know, the jokes and the fact that he's really funny, but he says some shit in his show that's scary. And I don't mean scary on a boo kind of in your face kind of way. I mean scary that it's very difficult to admit to yourself that you feel this way. Because most of the time people mask, they hide, they put themselves behind this facade, right? And he was so supremely honest in his show um, that I was really taken aback by it. And it, and it really, um, it gave me a lot of confidence because as somebody who wants to do the one man thing, his show was so supremely honest that all the ideas of what one man shows are and all the prejudices people have for one man shows kind of went away. He really knows how to craft a joke, you know, he knows what to say to make it funny and how to say it. But he's also been 
working his ass off. Like he's been, you know, I got, I, I was fortunate enough to talk to him afterwards and he worked his show for two years. He was like working it and taking things out and putting things in and uh, 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 and that's really exciting. That's what I, I want, you know, I want to be able to work this show and just get in there and grind it out and massage it and take things out and resonate and non resonate. I want to be able to do all of that with this show. And so it, it kind of got me back into thinking about what I want to do and making sure that I was supremely honest and brutally honest about myself and how um, I see things and how I think about the show. And I can't be afraid of saying some things that might hurt and not hurt people, hurt me. The Soul Pancake story dropped um, and I appreciate all the well wishes and, and the love that I got from the, f from the way that story was received. That's a very difficult story to tell. I'm gonna shout Nick Ross out and Soul Pancake for allowing me to tell that story uh, in a way that worked. I've been trying to figure out a way to tell that story for a long time. And when, when Nick came to me with that framing of it, about the moment when, um, it really clicked. It clicked for me. I was like, oh, okay, I could tell this story this way. And it helped. So I've been really trying my hardest to be on stage as much as I can or be in front of somebody as much as I can and telling pieces of this, these stories that are eventually gonna end up in the show, right? So um, Nick gave me that opportunity and Soul Pancake came, gave me the opportunity to try that story out. And I, I honestly didn't uh, think it was going to be that emotional, but it just kind of hit me, you know what I'm saying? It hit me because of how I was telling the story, the framing of the telling the story and how well um, Soul Pancake helped me define it. But also um, it helped because a lot of the times I don't think anybody cares. And I say this in the Soul Pancake thing, like I don't think anybody cares about my story. And that's because it's me living it. And I'm trying to get to the next thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get to the next gig. I'm trying to get to the next job. And it's kind of the, the, the life of a freelance artist which I've been for pretty much most of my adult life. And, you know, I don't know when the next dollar's coming through. I don't know what I'm doing. Most of the stuff you do in this vacuum, you know, you do it in, in this world of are people going to like it? And then you get judged by people who don't do what you do. You know, it all boils down to the ability to keep making things and making money and supporting yourself. And if you have a family, supporting your family and stress upon stress upon stress. So I think I'm at the point where I'm ready to start showing people stuff. And if you keep an eye on my Instagram, as well as this on YouTube, I am playing around with a bunch of toys that I'm going to try to put in the show. One of them is a virtual set that you can put images on and you can interact with. That's really exciting to me. You know, I've been doing theater for a lot of years and I think theater needs a little bit of a kick in the tuckus and I think it needs to, you know, light its pants on fire just a little bit. So uh, I am going to bring some stuff from people I, I trust and I know and love in the in the technologies world and in the film world and the special effects and the visual effects world to the stage. And it's super exciting. So please um, let me know what you think. I got a couple up on my Instagram stories. Um, I'll drop a photo today um, on Instagram to show you what, what I'm working on. But um, it's gonna be real fun. And I showed my director and he's excited. Ultimately, it is about the story and me having the ability to tell the story in some sort of succinct, succinct way. And I'm, it's just me and a motorcycle, y'all. Me and my Triumph Scrambler 900 figuring it out. Right, Triumph Scrambler 900? 
Great, on man. Um, I'm back. Field Notes is back. Process. Black History Month. Word is bond. Peace.